Yeah, in terms of, you know, definition of social impact, social enterprise, you know, balancing purpose and profit. For me, when it comes to social impact, it's just about about making a meaningful impact in the world. People can break it down into UN um, SDGs and things of that nature, but, you know, I kind of focus, we'll, we'll focus on education, economic development, health, environmental sustainability, and uh, insecurity, right? But at the end of the day, if you can make a meaningful impact on the world, I consider that social impact. And it's not, and let's, let's, let's be real here. I mean, I mean, some of y'all may be in college and some of you may not be, but it's not BS, right? Like it's, it's real. We're not saying this to make ourselves feel better. We're doing this to make other people better, right? And so, you know, from a social enterprise standpoint, these are just, you know, legal entities to make it, to make it happen, whether it's for-profit or non-profit, um, to me, doesn't really, you know, make a difference. It's all about making the world a better place in a meaningful way, um, not necessarily the magnitude of it. Now, in terms of balancing purpose and, and profit, it's interesting. Like, I actually have some type of thing going on in my head. I just probably need to find a therapist, but for me, actually, the more money I make, the worse I feel about, um, uh, uh, the worse I feel about about the uh, about the impact I'm having the world. It's actually kind of kind of weird. And I still have yet to figure it out. It's like that kind of get down to that that fourth why in, in the five whys. You know, so for me, oftentimes I'll I'll do the work out of passion to make the world a better place. But the minute there's like an economic value attached to it, something happens and stuff like that. Um, but that being said, whenever I'm talking to founders, you know, I'm always going to uh, encourage them to make a direct line between um, the revenue they're bringing in and um, the impact they're making. So you bring up uh, Jasmine Crow from, from Gooder and she started in our pre-accelerator program back in the fall of 2016. And it obviously evolved over the years. She got into Techstars and a few other programs. And for her, and they may have, they may have shifted since the last time I really talked to, to her in depth, is that essentially um, the more pounds of food they save a company, the you know the more they're going to change, they're going to charge that person. So a pound of food may equal like a dollar or something like that. And so um, to me, that's a very 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 good way to do it. Um, you don't start to go into these very complicated business models. It's very it's very simple. The more value we provide, the more we're going to charge you. Everybody wins. Yeah, I'll, I'll um, I can take it from there, um, and 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 agree, Joey. And I think uh, the way that I think about it is, if if a traditional company is built only around efficiency, uh, a a social impact company tries to align incentives between uh, creating better efficiency and ensuring social good. And and if you can um, make sure that the vision ultimately aligns those two objectives then that's how you create a, a social impact business uh, so that you are for profit and for good. Uh, the one other element that I would, I would add to that in, in addition to alignment of incentives, uh, the efficiency aspect is just creation of access. Uh, and largely for us, uh, I don't think our business could survive if it were not a social impact business because the, the segment of the population that we focus on as customers uh, are, are cut out of the market completely. And so we are in the, the shared housing space. Uh, and the reason why this opportunity exists is because this segment of the population currently cannot access traditional housing options. Uh, we, I would love it if, if they were able to, but the fact that there is no access creates that opportunity. And so we are able to build a business around creating opportunities for those those folks and, and generating a continuum, a true continuum of housing options uh, that they can progress through, but you need a starting point. And so I think those are really the three key elements, uh, the alignment of incentives, the, the efficiency of the operation to ensure that you are taking a system and making it more efficient, and in doing so, creating more access for people that don't already have it. Yeah, I, I just a, a couple of segments on that and just some practical ways and how I think through it and from a business model perspective. you know. Anytime I think about social impact companies or just a company in itself, right? And oftentimes I think the word profit in the social impact space is a, is a word that's actually pretty scorned. Um, and I think it depends on like 
the spaces that you're in within the social impact ecosystem. Um, I think now it's more accepted than it was back in the past, but I always look at profit as a way to sustain the mission. And oftentimes like we're big on purpose, we're big on a vision and, uh, and mission and vision and purpose, but not necessarily understanding what it what is necessary to sustain it. That profit may be resources, that profit may be partnerships, that may be relationships. Um, hopefully it's capital that's being reinvested to actually further the mission of what you're doing. And additionally, I think as a social impact company, you know, we went through the process of even becoming a B Corp. The one thing that I've I have recognized is that we're a little bit more diligent to ask more questions around the user and getting a sense of what is happening in every full aspect of their world, right? Meaning if we make this decision and move this direction from a business standpoint, not only does this impact, how does it impact our bottom line, but more so how does this impact, what are the spinoff effects of our actions, right? And I think it's just being a little bit more conscious in that space. And so just a couple of nuggets that have helped us think through what we do and how we do it and how it kind of emanates on a, on a daily basis for us. Very good point. Um, and I'm going to speak on the behalf of, so I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm a black founder. So I'm going to give you the real in terms of how I look at social impact and some of the things that have affected me growing up. And I mentioned some of the communities that I grew up in and I saw community leaders, social impact, forget social enterprise for a second, but community leaders being vilified in, in some cases for, for accepting money for social impact. And, and again, from a black community standpoint, like it's almost like a death sentence. Now, in some cases, people were shady. Let's, let's keep it real here. But the pressure is there from the communities and experiences that I've seen um, to, to not be, to not take, to not generate any type of substantial revenue nor profit from the from your work and making our community a better place, and so from a cultural standpoint, I don't I didn't, I didn't want to um, kind of leave that on the table because that's something that many founders of social enterprises do have to navigate. You know, will they be looked at as being somewhat shady or not doing this for the right reasons? Which is odd because they're literally making the world a better place, and that can affect a lot of decisions you make um, in the launching and therefore building of your company. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think super, super important uh, to think about sustainability, Dominic. And just point of discussion, we don't have to go into it now, but one of the companies that I often think of in this regard, who has largely a terrible brand reputation in terms of social impact, but has done a, a tremendous amount of good in the world is Uber, right? <laughs> and, and it's like, okay, for, for lots of reasons, they get a terrible rap. But if you look, if you measure, the impact based on the results rather than the, the brand or the leadership or uh, a CEO who's been disreputable in many ways. Uh, it's like, that is, that is absolutely, it, ha it has been a social impact business, even though I think the population at large never really thinks of it that way. Um, but no, and they, probably, they probably never will either <laughs> based, yeah. on the, based on the reputation they hold for sure. But it's a good point though, for sure.